dear students here i am uh, trying to offer you a helping hand uh, for literature right uh, today i am discussing uh, one of your short stories which is a sri lankan experience uh, the title the tip of the iceberg by lalita vitanaanti you know that uh, this is prescribed for bachelor of arts uh, external degree english b in english university of jayawardenapur in this channel i try to um, give you some lessons lalita vitanaanti uh, is a sri lankan writer she writes this short story tip of the iceberg through one of her, uh, her teaching experiences as a as an english teacher uh, who taught in many schools more than 30 years she had been teaching in various schools for over a period of 30 years here tip of the iceberg tip of the iceberg uh, that has uh, theory in physics in ice uh icebergs floating sea mm. when ice dissolves water level doesn't rise up that is uh, physics theory anyway uh, being a short story writer uh, lalita vitana chikan we expected to deal with physics mm. she here speaks of another social theory right she speaks of uh, titanic ship also right here see i discussed the short story for more than 20 years i taught english in many schools in various parts of the island i can remember the faces of my pupils as i struggled to teach them a foreign language that means here at the beginning the writer is uh, critical towards the process of teaching english in sri lankan schools at that time many years ago she speaks about 60th and 70th decade in sri lankan situation mm. the students struggle to the teacher struggle to teach a foreign language that mean that time english had been taught as a foreign language we know that english is a second language for years i coaxed cajoled goaded threatened and berated as they wrestled with the slippery syntax of english being a teacher she didn't find it easy to teach english that's why she had to coax cajoled god and also threatened and berated right that mean to teach a second language first of all there should be learners who are ready to learn but here we come to know that learners are not learners were not ready to learn they taught the torture they must have endured as at my hands studying the language that had sometimes to be taught as a second language and sometimes as a foreign language according to the dictates of the education department lalita vitana had been an english teacher in previous decades now here Uh, gives a criticism towards uh, the process of english education in sri lanka because teachers had to do that according to dictates of the education department mm. sometimes as a, she had to teach a second language and sometimes as a foreign language there was no proper process many were the seminars i was forced to attend i was forced to attend that she didn't like to attend but she was forced to attend i was so befuddled uh with methodology that i felt as was teaching language invented by other than top method of swain that means she didn't like methodology what she wants to tell is that english is a language language should be taught uh, in a natural environment the way the native speakers learn that native speakers don't learn english they first hear Uh, english words from within the living environment and then they produce that orally and that should be the process that should be started in sri lanka also as the writer suggests she 
doesn't like methodology. Uh, for the purpose of inspection, I kept notes of lessons and scheme of work immaculate. She kept notes and other things. Uh, according to the prescription, red lines, aims of lesson, number of units per topic, and so on. Once again, she says that this uh, system of teaching English in Sri Lanka is not suitable. Uh, other thing is that she had learned uh, English from native speakers. There she tells that. She knows that English is not a subject, but a language. But for a threat, when there was no, uh, for a treat, when there was no threat of inspection, I taught English the way my teachers, Miss Rick, Miss Chapman, and Miss Ines taught me. She speaks of three names of English teachers who taught English. They are Miss Rick, Miss Chapman, and Miss Ines. <clears throat> we understand that these are not uh, traditional Sri Lankan teachers. I mean, uh, second language teachers. They are native speakers. We can think that they were Sri Lankan burghers. Burghers are the descendants of Dutch and in Sri Lanka, they are the native speakers of English. So they didn't use uh, those things, uh, methodology, other things. They know how to teach language. I used the short, simple words that communicated the meanings. Yes, one of the vitality in speaking English in communication use of the simplest word because communication is meant for general public understanding like therefore we have to use short and common words and short sentences even English news on televisions on radio they should be very simple as the general public could understand that that is what here the writer says so at Anuradhra Central, I spent five glorious years teaching the tale of two cities. She tells that she taught in Anuradhra Central. She taught in Anuradhra Central College and she taught the uh, tale of two cities. Each year my joy increased uh, as with finite, uh, infinite patience. My pupils learned English and excelled in it. She says that under the central students learn and excel in it. Another truth we have to understand is that that time under the central was the best school in the district and uh, most on most occasions those who children who passed uh, that time grade six you know grade six bursary exam scholarship exam came to that school they are like their purpose was to learn right here the writer Later, deals is right also. At the end of this story, we come to know that the uh, surrounding for the writer's uh, short story is 71 insurgency that you people fought in Sri Lanka. Uh, years passed. I was transferred from school to school and finally I found myself in an institution of learning in the suburbs of Colombo. After teaching in so many schools I, uh, throughout the island, finally she was transferred to a transfer to one of the leading schools in Colombo. This had been a great school in its time, and it was named after a great saint, but there was nothing saintly or righteous in this temple of learning. She uh, purposely refrains from mentioning the name of that school, and she says it was started with uh, saint, great saint. However, the teacher, yeah, the narrator, uh, reveals the motto of this school as Nils Desperandum. Read the motto at the entrance. When we check this, only school in Sri Lanka with this motto, Nils Desperandum, means St. John College, Nugegoda. The teacher, if not this narrator, writer, described that the school as an unpleasant place which student didn't learn. Uh, I walked through the narrow passage and entered Bedlam. 4,000 boys were crammed in this ghetto. Several monsoons ago, roof of one block had been blown away. Broken furniture was heaped at one end of the playground. 
they served as plaything to these boys who had no bats or balls. Now, her description is uh, quite different from Anuradhapur Central and the St. John College, Nugegoda. She doesn't mention the name. She mentioned Anuradhapur Central because the student learned there, but here they didn't learn it. Right? Uh, background also unpleasant. Also, poverty stricken background is described by the writer. They had no bats or ball. She criticized government. Who should be responsible for that? Uh, their parents? No. Mm. Circumstances had made those boys a tough lot. There were circumstances, reason behind uh, those boys to be rough. Most of their fathers are unemployed. But Andhra many people were farmers. Okay, they did uh, their cultivations and they could earn something. Besides wrestling with uh, the English language that hung over their heads like uh, swords of Damocles in school, these boys wrestled with empty stomachs at home while their mothers groped for coppers in their husbands' empty pockets. Their behavior has been uh, sequenced by, consequenced by their father's poverty. Fathers had no anything, right? They were poor. Poor mothers groped for coppers in their empty pockets. They did odd jobs. I told that the word work could not be done here. I was told that. Sometimes principal and one told that work could not be done here. If I kept an eye on the boys and maintained some semblance of order, that was all that mattered. No need to teach, just to handle the boys. Principal had told one time, uh, most probably, principal had been a father, Catholic priest. No inspectors come here, so don't bother about notes of lessons and <clears throat> all this rubbish. Notes of lessons and all this rubbish. These are, they are uh, useless things according to that uh, principle, most probably of a priest. Say the principle, but you may be able to do some little thing for those boys. She was expected to do some little thing. I was in charge of 14 boys in that advanced level class. Now it was my turn to endure the tortures of teaching English to pupils who had neither text nor exercise books. They had neither text nor exercise books. Right? They were extremely poor. Privation has prevailed upon them. But there was one bright ray of hope. I had also to teach geography, my favorite subject. Now, being a teacher, English teacher, she could not teach English, so she selected teaching her favorite subject, geography. Here, my talents had not been yet stapled by regulations on the teaching of geography, as my English teaching had been crippled by the regulations of teaching English. She could teach English as the way she wanted, as her teachers, Miss Rick Chapman and Ines taught, but regulations of the English uh, education department didn't permit her to use her own way of teaching. She was uh, bound to those regulations, methodology, and other things. The boys were at my mercy. Anyway, I remember, the, remember this with deep affection. Sam, present. Rohita, present. Duminda Silva, here, Costa Innova, Rodrigo, hmm. she marked the attendance. I closed the register and began the lesson. Like the doomed, they sighed and groaned and sagged. They dragged their rickety chairs and huddled together, pimply faced. With a few wisps of beard, they sat with the lips tight watching me. These boys, those boys came to school not because they wanted to learn, but they were uh, driven by their parents. Otherwise, they didn't have a purpose of learning. This is the background of Kalambu that the writer described, that Nugegoda is a suburban area. Now, when she compares with Anuradhapura, uh, a question arises before us why those uh, boys behave that way. Take out your books, I said. Rohit and Duminda 
pulled out their battered exercise books from their trouser pockets. The others had none. Can I have some chalk, I asked. No chalk, I said Sam. Life was not that beneficent in this forsaken temple of learning. I removed my glasses and wiped my lenses and adjusted my, adjusted my spectacles. I waited for time. This teacher just wanted to kill time. That's why she adjusted the spectacles and wiped the lenses because she had, she could do nothing, no talk, no facilities. Students were not ready. They didn't have books. Neither they had textbooks nor exercise books. Silence descended upon the seated. I picked up the stub of chalk that was on my desk and wrote the word glaciation. Now, it's a geography lesson. She's going to uh, describe that glaciation. I could hear groan from under side. The student didn't like to learn that either. For the work of eyesight, Wrote and I wiped the dust from hand. My pupils seemed a trifle euphoric. I would tackle this subject the way I had done it on the other schools where I had taught. I told them about cold Arctic regions of snow, avalanches and icebergs. Avalanches mean, yes, uh, falling off, uh, yes, ice, hmm? snow. You see, only the tip of the iceberg, nine-tenths of it is hidden under the water. So they are a great hazard to ship in. Now, this is where we uh, right, find that theory of physics. Nine-tenths of iceberg is in water. One-tenth is only seen. Therefore, she says, the great part is not seen. The writer actually... Uh, now, let's go proceed with the story. Nothing is so depressing than having to copy a note read in a dull, sonorous, uh, on a hot April afternoon. I had my own special private discovery, as it teachers have. It's a hot afternoon. Remember that word, no? A hot April afternoon. Uh, the sensible teacher creates examples with the student response. She helps them to form concepts. My aim was to gently seduce and tantalize the pupils. I planted, I, uh, sorry, I planned to try the visual experience to them without too many details of physical geography. So having described the <clears throat> formation of iceberg, I launched upon the saga of the uh, brave Titanic. Now, uh, teacher takes Titanic ship as the example because Titanic ship collided an iceberg and wrecked, sea wrecked, you know, wrecked in sea uh, with 2,500 or like that passengers. Titanic, uh, that, that, that iceberg, only very few portion can be seen, one tenth, one ninth inside the water. Right, the writer equates that nine tenth of iceberg to public power and uh, general public power in the world, and that uh, ship, Titanic ship, the most, uh, I mean, richest people in the world. Titanic contained the richest people in the world. Before Titanic ship was uh, finished construction. They booked their passage, right? Millions, millions of uh, sterling funds they paid for that. So, aristocracy, aristocracy, people of the world, right? They sank in the sea, having collided ship on the iceberg. Mm, this uh, story acquires a maxi angle, right? According to the theory of uh, Marxism, uh, profit of the social class is the hard labor of poor, of the poor. Mm, having described, uh, yes, 
the boys settled down, Sam began to stroke his chin. Costa learned back. The Silva stopped fidgeting and I went on with my story. It was a luxury liner. I said, there was music and wine and many wealthy passengers were on the ship that was going on its maiden voyage. Ship's maiden voyage. Sam looked at Costa. I spoke slowly, inter, uh, intrusively, almost with religious fervor. Almost with religious fervor. Mm, because uh, Sri Lanka, the many are Buddhist. Right? Buddhist don't accept death of others. Right? They are sensitive towards other people. Because uh, all religions same, according to Buddhism, uh, we have to show loving kindness to all, right? All people. Buddha's theory, may all animals, right, heal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Suddenly, Yes, uh, in Prasuli, almost with religious fervor. I was not always that the geography lesson gives uh, material of such moment majesty. Suddenly, the sheep lurched, glass began to tinkle. Soon, there was a crash. The teacher creates that uh, tragedy dramatically. Okay. The 14 boys caught upon the drama on the Great voyage hung on every word and leaned forward. Water gushed into the ship's hall. The ship had stuck an iceberg. Remember, nine tenths of an iceberg is hidden. Right? She repeats it. After that, she says, the ship, uh, she says, 1,513 passengers were drawn. There was silence. A silence that was uh, shattered by a slight guffaw from Rodrigo. I thought I heard Costa gave a squeak, but this was not a laughing matter. Teacher was bewildered by the behavior of boys. Some boys were laughing. Some were trying to laugh. Because this was, this was not a laughing matter. It's a tragedy. I told them of the brave resolve of the captain who did not desert the sinking ship. Captain didn't desert the ship. He also sank with the deal. Yes, she. Now they were openly sniggering. Why? Later they understand. I, I will say they were laughing. There, there was a sound of pleading in my voice, I said softly. But this was a tragedy. But they were rich, shouted Costa, uh, thumping on the desk. They deserve to be drawn. With the final thumb, the black button of their shirt, his shirt flew off and rolled under my desk. He darted from his chair and retrie retrieved it as though it was something very precious. Vaguely, I noticed that many boys in class had black buttons on their shirts. It was in no more to go with my story. I would better hurry and be done with it. Right? With infinite patience, I rest and I concluded then, while the Titanic sang, the band played on. It said that Titanic was sinking, band was playing. Like a volcano that had erupted, they roared with laughs. The bell rang, and no one heard it, all except Sam. A light burnt in his eyes. He seemed to want to read, teach something that proved ailes you. A dream for, a demand for justice burned in his eyes. The teacher saw something. The bell had gone. I dismissed the class and all of the Titanic and went on. We did not have school next day or the next 
not for a very long time, for a very long time vacation. Nor did I see Sam and Kostaiva again. But every April I remember them. No, I will forget the day I had that lesson. It was the 4th of April, the day before the 1971 insurgency. I was told that insurgents were insurgents wore a black button as symbol. I had failed as a teacher. I had seen only the tip of the iceberg. Now, when we arrive at the end of the story, we come to know that uh, this narrator, as an English teacher, taught this lesson of geography with the title, The Tip of the Iceberg, mm, uh, on 4th of April. On 5th of April, 1971, insurgency had been uh, right launched. It was uh, fought that day. It was the first uh, ever fought rebel in Sri Lanka. It said that more than 30,000 young men died. No actual calculation because it was a time there was no uh, consensus like today, you know. Anyway, uh, Sirimo Bandaranaika's government time, youth people of Sri Lanka uh, organized that insurgency. Teacher didn't know that boys of this class, her advanced level class, were also the members. Many boys were wearing black buttons. There had been a symbol like that. I don't know. According to the teacher, that time they had wearing symbols. Teacher couldn't identify it. Anyway, teacher's lesson tallies with that uh, incident because <clears throat> after 1971 insurgency, some good things also happened in the country. It became a turning point of the political history. That means a uh, rich social class collapsed. It, United Nations organization forced Sri Lankan government to appoint a commission to look into the matter why these young youth people rebelled. Then one of the reasons, land problem, it was after that uh, UN, at that time United Nations organization, compelled, ordered Simos Bandaranaika's government to distribute land among people because land owned by uh, aristocracy, right? Thousands of acres. After that, Sirimo brought an act that uh, one man could keep only 50 acres, right? An act was uh, seconded in the parliament. After that, other land were uh, distributed among the people. Uh, thus, Sirimo kept uh, 50 acres, Chandrika, her daughter, 50, uh, other daughter, Sunetra, 50, and uh, Andrabandar, 50. After JR coming to power, JR abolished her right of uh, community because uh, she kept 400, 200 acres. One family could keep 500, 500 acres only. Sorry, 50 acres only. Yes, 50 acres, not 500, 50 acres. Uh, so, that 71 insurgency is said to be a turning point. It was after that in 1972, Republican constitution was uh, seconded in the parliament, right? Some good things also happened. For the first time of the country, general public, grassroots level society, people took weapons against the aristocratic ruling system. Good or bad? Sometimes uh, that is the illegal, but uh, they showed the people, rulers, that uh, poor people could organize an attack. Right? That's why he said, hmm? the, why were the boys laughing? Because, uh, the, right, aristocratic people's profit means the hard labor of the general public. For example, a garment factory. Factory owner gets profit, but the girls are paid very few, the same dresses, like that. The profit doesn't go to them. It is not uh, reasonably divided. They work hard and yes. Uh, other thing is that when the captain um, was, uh, the captain also sank with the ship, why did uh, boys laugh? Captain is an employee. 
he was a person who worked for salary. He could have left the ship, left the ship, but uh, ship belonged to capitalized company, rich company. The a poor man, actually, he is an employer. He's, he was an employee, poor one. You know, one person goes to a job for a salary. He appeared for the uh, company and he died with it. Those band players, they were also poor people. So that's why I said the short story has to be understood in the angle of uh, Marxist, Marxist theory. So there are uh, two different things that the teacher discusses, this writer. One is the Sri Lankan education system, English education. The writer is against that, right? She says that that is not suitable to Sri Lanka, right? According to herself, uh, English is a language, but not a uh, subject. But uh, she had to teach English in many schools as a subject. She's against that. That's not the correct way as she suggests. She says that uh, English should be taught naturally as the uh, nature speakers learn. Native speakers, they learn through hearing. They listen to English word first and then they express. They become far fluent because of that. But our Sri Lanka, our students, they are clever at writing. They get A, B from exams, but uh, very poor in coping with the real society. When going to real society, they are at loss. That's what the writer suggests here. So when you are given to write answers at the exam, uh, not uh, some, you are not given single one. Normally, this type of questions are, you know, uh, selecting any two short 2015 question, I, yeah, selecting any two short stories, discuss the notion of conflict as it is presented by different writers. Your answer should uh, have right uh, suitable length. One is your examiners are lecturers of universities. They are uh, doctors, professors, right? Therefore, you have to write to set, uh, satisfy them. Right, uh, though you learn theory, it's not uh, sufficient for you to answer. You have to practice it well, right? Uh, you have to write answers to past papers and examine yourself, right? Now, university provides uh, lectures also, seminars, better attend to all of them and uh, try to acquire good grade. Anyway, now selecting the short stories 2015, discuss the notion of conflict as it is presented by different writers. So you have, this is also one story that uh, about conflict, you can take other short stories and taking ideas from that, you have to write. Sometimes uh, giving the quotation is useful to uh, gather more marks. Right here, the writer uh, one thing she wants to say is about the English education and that is not suitable for the country. The methodology uh, and the notes and those things are not the thing. She, should, she says that priority should be given to practical communication. There should be a, a live environment or so natural environment for second language learners to acquire English resembling how native speakers do. In England, in America, they don't learn. They learn English later. In grade uh, eight or nine, like that, they begin grammar lessons after becoming ne, too fluent, very fluent in the language. Right? But we learn grammar and other things uh, at the first stage of starting the lessons. That's wrong, according to the writer. I think uh, there should be a proper process. Now I think government is uh, going to start uh, English medium from grade one. That is okay. Because the first two years, uh, sometimes there will be a problem because teachers have to be adjusted, you know. But after two years like that, it will become normalized. Right? That is a uh, 
suitable action whoever does good we have to appreciate that so other thing is about this uh, social class the poet sorry the writer equates titanic ship to the rich social class in sri lanka here and uh, that nine tenth of unseen part of iceberg to public power up to now in sri up to then in sri lanka the aristocratic ruling system didn't know what public power was for the first time titanic ship collided just like uh, rich social class ruling rulers also aristocratic uh, that ship also that mean their ruling system was challenged by general public that is the truth here the writer wants to see right if you want uh, more details you can contact me my phone number not 71 right double two five nine one one zero right uh wish you all the best